what he what it does what he does in this book is there's like over 900 different chemical compounds in like a variety of plants he's a as a plant uh, per, specialist so that's his specialty and he categorizes like over 900 of these compounds where these these compounds are you know potentially going to induce a hormetic response and so i know several scientists are actually using some of these compounds that are at least listed in this book to study their effects like in mice and eventually in humans but like some of them, like um, plumagen, plumagens in black walnuts, and it's been sh- it actually causes a slight stress in our brain, and um, it has been shown in mice to protect against ischemic stroke, because it's like it activates all these good things that protects against ischemic stroke. Um, there's another one called galantamine, which is in snowdrop flowers. Galantamine uh, is it also stressful in the brain. Like I said, these these plant compounds are designed to target insect nervous systems. So it's no surprise they're affecting, you know, the nervous system of, of mammals. Um, and in fact, in this case, humans as well. Galantamine increases acetylcholine production in the brain. And um, acetylcholine plays a role in learning and memory. And it's actually given to Alzheimer's patients, galantamine, to help them, you know, remember things, to help them with their, to improve their memory. But it's, it's, it's just one of those natural insecticides. Yeah, um, acetylcholine at- is uh, a nootropic a lot of people take acetylcholine just from memory. <clears throat> well, the thing I like about the getting it from um, getting it from pl- getting it from a hormetic type of response versus like, let's say someone designed a drug to um, to activate the acetylcholine receptor, is that you always have these like biological feedback sy- mechanisms when you're when you start to activate a receptor in the brain pharmacologically your brain your brain knows your brain's like oh i'm getting a lot of this stuff that i don't usually get a lot of i'm going to stop making as much of the receptor the receptor is what's necessary to have the physiological response so your brain's like oh i'm just going to stop making as much of this receptor but then what happens is if you don't give it that signal if you don't take that drug then you've got less of that receptor and so you're going to have massive like withdrawal it's going to be like crazy because now whatever acetylcholine you do make it's not going to have much of an effect because there's less of that receptor there to actually bind to it whereas when you have something like galantamine something that's um, a hormetic inducer what's happening is you're actually you're not actually doing anything to acetylcholine neurons or to to uh, the, the receptor or anything directly, it's slightly to- it's slightly toxic. And part of the way your brain deals with the type of stress that it induces is it goes, oh, this is the kind of stress I need to make. I need to steal choline for this. For right. whatever reason, whatever, you know, these plants are doing different things. For whatever reason, the galantamine is like the one that says, okay, acetylcholine. So your body is, res- it's a response to something kind of like triggering it, you know? Right. And so you're not going to have that feedback mechanism where it's like, so if you take it in a pharmacological form, a ph- pharmaceutical form. Yeah, I'm just saying a lot of, you know, I mean, the classic example would be uh, opioids, right? right? Opioid painkillers. So when you're taking an opioid painkiller, what's happening is there's a, a couple of different opioid receptors in the brain. And the opioid painkiller is kind of like a morphine derivative, which is sort of like endorphin. It binds to something called the mu opioid receptor, which is what endorphins bind to. And that's, endorphins make you feel good. That's also part of the reason why you exercise, why you, you know, you're, you're wanting that endorphin release. Um, well, what happens when you start to like make a drug, like morphine derivative type of drug that goes and directly activates that receptor, binds to it, is that receptor, the mu opioid receptor, you start to make less of it. And that's been shown. When you, when you give morphine drugs, you downregulate, you make less of the receptors. So now what happens is when you don't have that opioid drug, you know, let's say you, you had, you know, this much receptor, you start taking the drug, right? And now your receptor's going down here, right? And so now if you don't have the drug, you're down here. And so any endorphin you make isn't going to do much. You're like, oh man, I need more of that. And, it, you know, so you keep having just to get back up to baseline, just to get back mm. up to normal, which is why you can have addiction. Addiction can be very common with those types of painkillers because of the effect on the receptor, mu opioid receptor. So... That's, you know, that's one of the problems. And interestingly enough, there's another type of opioid receptor called the kappa opioid receptor, which um, I've, I think I've discussed with you before on one of the podcasts because uh, kappa opioid receptor is sort of the opposite of the mu opioid receptor because it actually, um, when you make something in your body called dynorphin, 
it it's responsible for a dysphoric feeling, whereas new opioids, euphoric, you feel good. Dysphoric feeling is the kappa opioid. You make dynorphin because uh, it cools your body. So when you're hot, when you're when you exercise, when you elevate your core body, when you sweat, that's that's a good sign. When you're sweating, you're making dynorphin. When you sit in the sauna, you're making dynorphin, and you know, when you're working out hard enough that you're sweating, you're physically, you're uncomfortable, right? You're like, damn, it sucks. You feel uncomfortable. And the same goes when you're sitting in a, in a hot sauna and you're, you're sweating, you're getting really hot. Man, you're just like this, you feel dysphoric. Like that's, that's what's happening is dynorphin is binding to the cap opioid receptor. Well, the really cool thing about this whole pathway, again, comes coming back to feedback. Your biology is so smart. It always like figures out a way, um, when you start to ag- when you start to activate that kappa opioid receptor, your body's like, "Whoa, I'm getting a lot of this bad stuff. I need to like make more of these good receptors because I got too much of this dysphoric." So it actually causes more the, it causes your body to make more mu opioid receptors, and it makes them sensitive. So then the next time you release endorphin, you know, you work out, boom, it feels even better, and it lasts. You know, so that's part of the reason why. Um, I know that there's certain drugs that are used to treat um, opioid addiction, uh, activate the cap opioid receptor pathway, exercise. Some people use sauna. I, I don't think they understand the mechanism, but so because anything that's going to help you with dynorphin, because people that are taking opioids, opioids, opioid painkillers, their mu opioid receptors are already like down, down, down. You you want it back up, and dynorphin activating that cap opioid receptor will do that. It's been shown in multiple studies. You know, so kind of went on a little rant there but it's <laughs> <laughs> there's a few things i wanted to ask